because it is Olympic gear, I'm uh, coming around a little bit slower on purpose uh, than, than usual. Uh, when I was running for San Jose State College, uh, and it, under the fine coaching of uh, Coach Bud Winter, he had us doing this type of uh, uh, training simply because we went up to schools against schools like BYU and uh, Cal before before this time. So this is why I'm, I'm coming along a little bit slower. That In I other words, you're building your peak for the, the Olympic trials. That's right. Tommy, what uh, problems will there be if you, uh, when you go to the Olympic trials, you build your peak up for that, and then you've got to rebuild another peak. Is it uh, difficult to build two peaks in a year? No, no, if, you, if you're careful about it. Uh, I don't intend to build a, a, a complete peak. Uh, right now, I can run a 20.2 or 20.3 with the shape I'm in now, and I'm not at uh, my peak. So uh, this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, keep things, uh, you might say, at a stage where I can peak in a week and a half or two weeks. And uh, that's what you intend to do then uh, for the Olympic trials? Uh, preceding that time also. Well, Tom, uh, when will come a determination whether you, Lee Evans, and others will or uh, will or will not boycott uh, uh, the Olympics? I wish I could tell you. This is a question that uh, I don't think I could give you and I don't think anyone else could give you. It will be determined by the actions of uh, the uh, community around us. Now, Tom, you say in the community around us, do you mean only the athletic community? This is one phase of it. Uh, as far as the athletic community is concerned, I, I am uh, uh, preparing myself for the uh, Mexico feat. Mm -hmm. But as far as the outside community is concerned, this, this is still undecided because I will not go unless uh, the black community say fine. Because I am one athlete. And so many people say that, okay, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Olympics is an individual thing. But everybody has its own opinion. Well, so many people have told me that uh, athletics shouldn't be uh, posted as a, as, as a political uh, uh, ground. Uh, many people have told me, okay, uh, Smith, uh, since you're great now and you open your big mouth, don't you know that athletics shouldn't be on, on the political ballot? And so many people say, okay, uh, like you, for instance, uh, uh, this is a stepping stone for the rest of the world. See, there, these, there are two conjunctions here that uh, shouldn't be mixing, but they are, and people are still trying to keep them apart and trying to keep them apart, they're mixing them up. And when I start mixing them up, they say I'm wrong. In other words, your life uh, in the last uh, six months or so has been much more difficult than it was before? I think so. And it will remain that way. <laughs> Tom, has it uh, made any difference in your desire? Now, last year you said that uh, uh, your biggest desire was to, to go to the Olympics. Has it made any difference in your desire? Uh, no, I do have a desire to participate in the 1968 Olympic Games, but I also have a dignity to look up to and look forward to. I'm looking uh, again in the field of athletics. Uh, you were drafted by a professional football team. Uh, do you still have hopes of uh, taking that up uh, as soon as the, your Olympic uh, uh, situation is over? Well, this, this all depends. Uh, uh, the Rams have contacted me, you know, now and then about uh, about the uh, possibility of uh, playing for them. But really, I haven't put my total mind to uh, deciding whether I will play for the Rams or not. Although I would like to try it sooner or later. Olympic trials once again, America sends to the Olympic Games its finest young men and women athletes. Let the event begin.
thus far, Rob, it's been real, real good. I've been real pleased with the progress that we've been making. I feel that uh, we're going to have a team that uh, might surprise quite a few people down there. Now, you feel like uh, in the past you say that they've been just taking a club team who really hasn't trained for the Olympics. This is the first time that they've really selected a team. Now, do you, you feel that this is still the best way? Uh, the way we're doing it now, yes, there's no question about it. Uh, the only thing I think we need more of is international experience in between the Olympiads. I think we should have a national team every year uh, to go over and meet the Europeans uh, or at least raise the money to allow them to come over here to meet us. And how does the style of play between the United States and Europe uh, differ? Well, of course, we rely primarily on our swimming uh, abilities, uh, our speed and quickness. The uh, Europeans play a much more deliberate type of game, uh, stressing size. And we can't afford to play that way for the simple fact that we don't have that big a team. Most of the teams that we're going to be meeting, uh, for instance, the Yugoslavians average 6'3", roughly 201 pounds a man. And this <laughs> makes it very, very difficult if we want to sit and play slowly with them. Uh, we find ourselves in a great deal of difficulty. Now, what kind of team are you fielding? Well, we're fielding a very quick, fast, uh, intelligent team, one that uh, possesses the great ball handling skills uh, and shooting skills that are needed to fit in with this style of play. So for the, the Neil fight, uh, what are some of the basic principles of water polo which uh, uh, we're seeing right now? Well, the basic principle, of course, is to get the ball <laughs> in the goal. Uh, and most people, I think, when they watch this sport, should watch away from the ball. I don't think they should watch the ball that much because most of the action in water polo takes place away from the ball and uh, all of these players, uh, if you'll notice, are moving about with some intelligence even when they don't have the ball trying to find the path that's going to lead towards that goal. Then uh, stamina is for a 45 minute match or the four or five minute uh, quarters which normally run out to about 45 minutes. Uh, stamina is a necessity. Absolutely. In fact, Rob, there was a study done by the Canadians not long ago, and they listed all sports in terms of physical conditioning and cardiovascular conditioning. And the, the degree to which it, uh, it, you had to be in shape to play these sports. And the top two sports from, that require the most conditioning were soccer and water polo. Now, uh, has altitude training, do you think, helped, or does it make that much difference? We had a problem about the first three or four days up here, but right after that there was no problem whatsoever. We've been taking running medical tests on blood count, hemoglobin, and we have found that every boy's hemoglobin count shot up very, very quickly within the first week. And their adaptation was, uh, I would say, very easy. I think you'll find that uh, it tends to be a little more mental or psychological, uh, this idea of performing at altitude, than it is physical. Actually, uh, when you come right down to it, you'll find that most most people come up and they say it takes them two weeks to adjust to altitude. Well, they're not in very good shape to begin with. And, of course, these athletes, when they came up here, were in superb condition, so the adaptation was fairly easy. What chances do you give your team in the Olympics? Real good. I think a lot of it depends on the officiating more than anything else. Does officiating differ that much from country to country? Yes, uh, unfortunately, it, it can tend to be a little political. Uh, whether it is or not I, in this particular Olympiad, I don't know. We found this to be true last year when we were in Europe. Uh, certain referees work for certain countries and call accordingly because they're used to the team and so forth. I think, uh, I think we have the, the talent and the ability to certainly go all the way. Uh, however, we are a definite dark horse and we're going to need every break we can get to do it. It's very, very difficult, especially when these boys have been with me for such a long time. Most of them started with me at AWOL High School. And this means they've been with me now for roughly five, six years. And to have to cut them is indeed extremely hard for me, uh, although I have to wear another hat now, and that is the national coach of the United States team. And I have to be looking out now for the interests of the United States and not necessarily those of the Foothill Aquatic Club. Now, uh, who are some of the standouts that you'll have uh, from the uh, Santa Clara Valley who will be uh, uh, playing in Mexico City? Well, Gary Shear, uh, without a doubt, I think is one of the finest water polo players in the world. Uh, he is... Uh, had a tremendous training camp here and has performed very, very well. 
Uh, Barry Weitzenberg has also had a tremendous camp here. Uh, I, I've never seen Barry play better. And John Parker, of course, uh, not even being on the Pan Am team last year, has now made the Olympic team. Now, how did, did John, for instance, uh, did he try out for Pan Am and not make it, and this year uh, just uh, maturity? Yes, that's exactly what it is. The experience that he got last year with the national team in Europe, uh, when he was at he was the 11th man uh, on the Pan Am team, and we only took 10. We were only allowed 10, and he was the 11th man. And by the end of the European tour, he'd worked his way up to the either third or fourth man on that team. The teams we have to beat, I think, are Yugoslav. Wow, so you get ready to close it. Yeah, I know. Been on that.